My name is Maria Gaughan. I'm an undergraduate at Assumption University, currently doing summer research in the Center for Neuroscience. I'm going to be discussing the phototactic behavior of red-tailed fairy shrimp, known as Streptocephalus magna. Branchiopods are a class of crustaceans, which includes fairy shrimp. The branchiopods used in this experiment are found in ephemeral pools, temporary freshwater habitats, which undergo periods where they are completely desiccated. These pictures show two of the Arizona desert sites that the soil we used to grow the animals were collected from. The top picture shows a completely dried out pool, while the bottom picture shows a pool after a rain. These animals have evolved in a way that allows for their eggs to survive this desiccation and lay dormant until water is once again available. The ephemeral pools have high levels of particulate matter and suspended soil in the water column. These conditions are thought to affect the spectrum of light that penetrates into these pools, creating a dimmer habitat than those in most other freshwater and terrestrial habitats. Pools are also spectrally variable within a region. In this talk, we will consider how Streptocephalus macchini, which I will refer to as red-tailed fairy shrimp, respond behaviorally to broad spectrum light. We also compared how male and female shrimp respond. Branchiopods have a simpler optic lobe neuroanatomy than other pan crustaceans, a group which includes crustaceans and insects. The optic lobe is the part of the nervous system that processes information from the compound eye, and it's thought to result in a reduced ability to process colored information in comparison to many crustaceans or insects. The fairy shrimp and all branchiopods studied to date only have two neuropils in the optic lobes, a lamina and a visual tectum, instead of the usual three that most pan crustaceans possess, as shown in the diagrams. Despite having reduced nervous systems to, pro to process the spectral information from the visual system, it is surprising that fairy shrimp likely have four spectral photoreceptor classes, as supported by recent research published in 2018. Different photoreceptor classes are responsible for picking up different wavelengths of light. Their luminance vision is most likely summed from multiple, multiple spectral photoreceptor classes for depth selection in dim environments, and it is thought that the branchiopods' light-dependent behavior could involve this summation. Photoreceptors are found in the omatidia of the compound eye. The compound eye of these branchiopods is very sensitive and most likely expresses four or more opsin proteins. These are found in the rhabdon, shown here in the diagram. In comparison, birds have four photoreceptor classes used for dernal color vision, and butterflies use five or more. Both of these animals have much more complex nervous systems and brains than those of fairy shrimp, which allows them to process the spectral information picked up by their photoreceptors better than fairy shrimp. Phototaxis is the orienting and directional response to light. If an organism moved towards the light, they are demonstrating positive phototaxis, and if the organism moves away from the light, they're demonstrating negative phototaxis. This top picture is of our testing chamber with the dividers in place to make five separate sections. The animals are placed in the middle chamber, and then the dividers are removed, as shown in this bottom picture, to allow the animals to move freely. After 45 seconds, the dividers are placed back into the testing chamber to see which section the animals ended up in. Male and female red-tailed fairy shrimp swim at different levels of the water column. There are two physical characteristics that help distinguish between the male and female red-tailed fairy shrimp. The males have second appendages that hang out in front of their heads, while females have an ovisac that sticks out from their bodies, which can sometimes be a bluish color. Males are more likely to swim closer to the surface than females, and it is thought that this is a behavioral response to light, but that is not certain at this time. Our question is how do these animals use light to place themselves in the water column and how does it differ between the males and the females? Our response index is calculated to compare positive and negative phototaxis by subtracting the number of animals that moved away from the light from the number of animals that moved towards the light and dividing that by the total number of animals. This creates a single response metric that ranges from negative one to positive one. The figure on the top right corner is helpful to understand the x-axis of the two graphs on the next slide. Light is lost rapidly with depth in an ephemeral pool while with the intensity reaching lower than starlight at less than a meter of depth. We tested across the range shown here. The highest light intensities that the animals were tested under are comparable to light at the surface in late morning or early afternoon. 
The light intensity of 10 to the power of 7 is comparable to moonlight at the surface, and the lowest intensity tested 10 to the power of 5 below starlight intensities. The lowest intensities at which arthropods are known to employ color vision are in the starlight range, above the lowest intensity tested. The figure on the left shows the behavior response index of male red-tailed fairy shrimp to broad spectrum light in comparison to the control, and the figure on the right shows the behavior response index of female red-tailed fairy shrimp to broad spectrum light in comparison to the control. If we follow along with the graphs, we can see that as the intensity increased, the animals responded with more negatively phototactic behavior. Based on this preliminary result, the males were noticeably positive phototactic at the lowest intensity and negatively phototactic at all other intensities, while the females were negatively phototactic at all intensities. This could be one of the mechanisms males use to stay slightly higher than the females in the water column. In the next slide, we will explore this difference further by visualizing the positive phototactic responses. These graphs show the percentage of male and female fairy shrimp that move toward broad spectrum light at different intensities. The comparison between these two figures highlights the difference between the male and female positive phototactic responses. As you can see, the percentage of males with positive phototactic responses at the lowest intensity, 10 to the power of 5, which would be close to starlight in a terrestrial environment, is greater than that of the control by roughly 13%. The percentage of females with positive phototactic responses at the same intensity is only slightly greater than that of the control. I intend to test these animals' responses to narrow wavelength light to see if there's any difference in sensitivity based on what is known of their photoreceptors. Based on preliminary data, this negatively phototactic response doesn't seem to change between broad spectrum light and other wavelengths, which may indicate that they are not using color vision mechanisms for this behavior. The overall behavior of moving away from light is survival based. If the fairy shrimp stayed close to the surface, birds would be able to swoop down and eat them. Since they move away from light, they're also moving away from the surface to a level of water column better suited for survival. Recent research has shown males tend to swim slightly higher in the water column than the females and is likely due to them using a single photoreceptor class at these low intensities. However, it is possible that color vision is responsible for the phototactic responses at higher intensities. Thank you to Assumption University and the Center for Neuroscience for providing the Summer Research Fellowship.